Have you ever wondered why I'm switching from Intel to AMD? Let's take a step back to my early days with Intel CPUs. Picture this, the year is 2017 and I'm eagerly unboxing my first Intel Core i7-8700K processor. The promise of high-speed, multi-core performance had me captivated. The thrill of gaming, the seamless multitasking, it was a PC enthusiast's dream come true. Time passed, and so did my desire for more power. I transitioned to the Core i9-10900K, a beast of a processor that offered impressive overclocking capabilities. It was like having a supercar under the hood of my PC. But as with all things, evolution is inevitable. The Core i9-12900K came knocking, boasting a hybrid architecture that was a game the efficiency cores handled background tasks, background tasks, while the performance cores took care of heavy-duty gaming and content creation. The most recent member of my Intel family was the Core i9-13900K. With each upgrade, I was chasing the promise of better performance, faster speeds, and smoother gaming experiences. And, for the most part, Intel delivered. Each of these processors had their moments of glory, their time in the sun. They each offered a unique blend of power and performance that, at different points in time, could have been considered among the best in the market. But my journey with Intel has been more than just upgrades and high-performance gaming. It's also been about overcoming challenges, troubleshooting issues, and yes, even dealing with the occasional blue screen of death. My relationship with Intel has been a roller coaster ride of highs and lows. While these processors have had their moments in the sun, my journey with Intel hasn't been without its hiccups. And it's these hiccups that have led me to reconsider my loyalty to Team Blue. But more on that later. For now, let's just say that every journey has its bumps, and my journey with Intel has been no exception. Stability issues are commonplace in the world of CPUs, but the ones I faced with Intel were a different beast altogether. Now, I'll never point a finger at AMD or Intel for temporary stability hiccups. They're par for the course, especially when new hardware is launched. But what I experienced with Intel was something else. Last year, a swarm of unsupported processor Blue Screen of Death or BSOD alerts plagued Intel's 13th gen CPUs. Initially, the blame was cast on Microsoft due to a Windows update that seemed to trigger the error. But a few weeks later, the finger was pointed at Intel. It turned out the BSODs were a result of a microcode error. It wasn't the apocalypse. Intel and MSI collaborated to fix the issue in a few weeks, but it was a hassle that left a bitter taste in my mouth. Fast forward to now, and we're in the midst of another wave of instability woes. Recent high-end Intel CPUs are showing stability issues, and it took months after these problems were first reported before Intel publicly acknowledged the instability. Motherboard updates have been released to improve stability, but they come at the cost of a performance drop of up to 9%. The stability issues only affect a select number of certain unlocked CPU models, but that doesn't make it any less of a problem. If you're shelling out five or $600 on a processor, you shouldn't have to compromise on performance because you happen to draw the short straw and got a chip with stability problems. I, for one, dealt with constant crashes and B-SODs with my Core i9-13900K, there were times I could go weeks without a hitch, only to be hit with multiple crashes in one night. I haven't spent enough time with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D to lay blame solely on the CPU, but so far I've yet to see any crashes or B-SODs. The constant crashes and B-SODs were beginning to wear thin on my patients. The last thing I want is to worry about system stability when I'm trying to enjoy my gaming experience. When you're spending a substantial amount on a processor, the last thing you want is to compromise on performance. But that's exactly what's happening with some of these high-end Intel CPUs. To address the stability issues, motherboard updates are being released, but they come at a hefty price. How hefty, you ask? Imagine sacrificing up to 9% of your performance. That's a substantial drop, especially if you're a heavy gamer like myself who thrives on high frame rates and smooth gameplay. Now, these stability issues are not affecting all Intel CPUs, mind you. It's a select number of certain unlocked CPU models, but even so, it's still a significant issue. It's like buying a sports car and discovering that you have to remove the turbocharger because it sometimes causes the engine to stall. 
you're still left with a decent car, heck, but it's not the performance beast you paid for. In my own experience, using the Core i9 13900K was a roller coaster ride. There were periods when I could go weeks without a hiccup, but then there were times when I would face multiple crashes in a single night. It felt like walking on eggshells, never knowing when the next crash would occur. Now I've recently started using AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X3D in my main gaming rig. It's still early days, it does, but so far the experience has been smooth. I haven't encountered any crashes or blue screen of death alerts. It's a refreshing change from the constant troubleshooting and uncertainty I had with the Intel CPU. Intel has been my go-to for many years, and it's not like they produce unstable CPUs that are ready to implode at any moment. Far from it. But when you have widespread issues that persist for months, it's difficult to turn a blind eye. Whether it's a problem with the hybrid architecture or too much power being pushed to the chips, it's not something I want to worry about when I'm settling down for a gaming session. The widespread issues that went unaddressed for months were the final straw. It was time for a change, and that's why I decided to switch to AMD. With the growing frustration with Intel, I found myself drawn towards AMD, specifically the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. The transition wasn't as daunting as I initially thought. In fact, it was like a breath of fresh air. You see, I've always appreciated AMD's drive for innovation and their commitment to providing value to their customers. And right now, their Ryzen 7 7800X3D is a shining example of that. This processor caught my attention for several reasons. First, it promises excellent gaming performance, which is my primary concern. But it goes beyond that. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D also offers a good balance of power and efficiency, a combination that has become increasingly important into today's high-demand gaming environment. But the real clincher for me? The stability. Remember those crashes and blue screens of death I was dealing with Intel? Well, they're gone. Since switching to the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, my gaming rig has been running smoothly. I have yet to experience a single crash or be assad. It's like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I can finally focus on enjoying my games rather than troubleshooting my hardware. Now, I'm not saying that AMD is perfect. No tech company is. But from my experience so far, they seem to be more proactive in dealing with issues and more transparent in their communication with customers. These are qualities that I value highly, and they certainly played a role in my decision to switch. As I continue to use the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs over the long term. Will it continue to deliver the stability and performance that I need? Only time will tell. But based on what I've seen so far, I'm optimistic, so there you have it. That's why, after years of using Intel, I've decided to give AMD a shot. It's a decision that was driven by a desire for stability, performance, and value. And so far, I'm happy with my choice. While it's still early days, my AMD journey has been crash-free. No journey is without its bumps, and my time with Intel was no different. Indeed, my seven-year-long ride with Intel brought along its fair share of highs and lows, from the glory days of the Core i7-8700K to the recent struggles with the Core i9-13900K, it's been a journey of constant learning and adapting. But let's not forget, change is the only constant, and in the ever-evolving world of tech, this couldn't be more accurate. I've seen Intel CPUs evolve, innovate, and sometimes stumble. However, the persistent stability issues I've recently faced with Intel have been the catalyst for my switch. The constant crashes and blue screen of death alerts became more than just a nuisance. It started affecting my gaming experience, and that's something I couldn't compromise on. It was disheartening to see a CPU I'd invested a significant sum into not delivering the stability I'd come to expect. But here's the thing. It's not about pointing fingers or laying blame. Every tech journey has its own set of challenges. The key lies in how these challenges are addressed and rectified. The prolonged silence and delayed responses from Intel were disconcerting, to say the least. And so I've decided to switch lanes and join Team Red, with AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X3D now powering my gaming rig. Since the switch, I've yet to encounter any crashes or B-SODs, and that's a promising start. But let's clear the air here. 
This isn't a definitive declaration that AMD is superior to Intel. It's about my personal journey and the decisions I've made based on my experiences. There's a reason why I stuck with Intel for so long, and there's a reason why I'm now giving AMD a shot. In the end, it all boils down to what serves your needs the best. For me right now, it's AMD. Tomorrow, who knows? The tech landscape is ever-changing, and I'm here for the ride, bumps and all. As I continue my PC gaming journey with AMD, I look forward to seeing how this decision pans out.